everyone and welcome back to Adman Unlimited. We're going to continue our machine alignment series. In our last video we talked about how to level our machines and the importance of leveling them. And then we took some data on how our table runs relative to its rotation as it's moved. The next step that we're going to do is we have to make sure that the surface of the table itself is in parallel with the plane of XY motion. As our table moves, we want that surface to move parallel with our X and Y so our part height doesn't change. If our table has some tilt to it as we move in X, our part height is going to change relative to Z and that's going to give us some inaccuracies. To do this, what we're going to do is we're just going to take a dial indicator we're going to use a block. My table is scalloped, so I can't put the dial indicator directly on the table. So I just use a, a vice jaw that I ground up to be pretty smooth and flat. We're just going to hang the indicator off the Z. We're not going to move Z at all. We're just using it to hold the indicator above the table. And then we're going to move the table around under that indicator and see if the height of the table is changing at all. So this will verify for us that we are definitely uh, parallel to the plane of motion. So let's go to the machine and make some measurements. We have our indicator set up. It's just hanging off of the spindle uh, using an indicator holder. Got my GoPro set up so that you can see the indicator face. Now while we're running this test, you're going to see the indicator move a lot. It's not moving a lot because this machine has a lot of error. It's moving a lot because it's an extremely high resolution indicator. Each number on the indicator is relative to 0 0.01 millimeters or 4 ten thousandths of an inch roughly. Each hash mark on this indicator is 0 0.002 millimeters or about 75 millionths of an inch. So it's an extremely sensitive indicator. So we'll be able to see how much variation we have in our table. The first thing we'll do is we'll run side to side on X and see how X looks. And then we'll run forward back on Y to see how Y looks. So let's do X first. Now if you notice my block, I can move my block a little bit. And this block is, you know, fairly flat. It's, it's flat within about a ten thousandths. So I'm just going to jog X and just hold the block and let the block slide on X. So between the center of the table and the very edge of the table, we have approximately about five ten thousandths of an inch of movement. And that little bit of movement can either be a little bit of wear on the surface of the table, or we could also be seeing that little tiny bit of uh, Abbey error that we saw when we leveled the machine. We noticed there was about 30 arc seconds of error across the whole movement of X. So now let's jog X back the other way. For roughly around center, we can see we repeated pretty well. Got a little bit of jitter in the indicator. So now when we're this way, we got about five ten thousandths of an inch this way. Now notice the indicator uh, extended or went, went down in measurement on the other side, and this side we went up. So our, our table probably has about a thousandths of an inch of slope to it across the full 20 inches of travel. So across 20 inches of travel, we got approximately a thousandths of an inch. So let's move it back the other way again see if we can get it to repeat. You 
And you notice how it falls off real hard at the very end. So again, if we stay within the center of our table and use maybe about 75% of our travel, you know, we've got way less than a thousandth of an inch of slope. The thousandth of an inch only shows up at the very end of the extremes. Again, that's related to the design of the saddle and the design of these machines. So let's check Y. So let's bring X back to center. So we repeated. Now we're going to rotate our block. Now let's move Y. off the table there. So we got, again, about maybe four ten thousandths of an inch of travel there. Remember, each, each number is about four ten thousandths of an inch. And we're off the table. So we probably only have about maybe five ten thousandths, eight ten thousandths of an inch of variation in Y, and that's across 16 inches. So by doing this test, we can tell that our table is nice and parallel to our plane of motion. Uh, you know, having a couple of ten thousandths of an inch of slope is well within the specs of this machine. You can always refer back to your machine specs to see you know, how accurate it's supposed to be, but that's well within uh, what we need to do to make our parts accurately. Now, what if it wasn't in spec? What if the table was sloped this way, or this way, or that way? What do you do then? A lot of people will say, oh, throw a cutter in the machine and surface the table. Well, that's the last thing you want to do. You don't want to surface a table because it's got a little bit of a tilt to it. Then what you're going to do is you're just going to mask the problem that it's got tilt to it. It's not aligned correctly. In this machine's case, in a linear machine, what you have is you have four what they call trucks, and that's your ball bearings, and they're in each corner of the table underneath the table. If you have a boxway machine, you're going to have uh, members that go around the boxway and they'll have some wedges in there on, on, the, uh, on the gibs. You can adjust those wedges to level the table. In the case of a linear machine, normally underneath the trucks, there is a precision ground shim. You can make very careful measurements, take the shims out, and then grind them, or if you need to make new shims, make them taller, and then replace the shims, and that is how you level a table. You don't just face it. You want to fix the problem, not cover it up. So that's how you would level a table. Um, it's hard to get a shot underneath of the trucks themselves, um, but there, there's shims underneath the trucks that you need to remove and then adjust to fix that condition. You can see how by just using a simple dial indicator, now you don't have to use a uber precise dial indicator that I use, the simple tenth dial indicator should suffice for a garage shop or a home shop application. But you can see by just hanging a simple indicator off of our Z head and then using a gauge block and moving our table around, we can very quickly and easily make sure that the surface of our table is parallel with the plane of XY motion. This alleviates us from having any tilt in the table relative to our XY. In our next video, we're going to talk about straightness and how to adjust and, and bring a machine in on the straightness of movement in X and Y. I hope you're finding these videos informational, and we'll see you in the next one.